So to solve these kind of problems, we always start from free body diagram. Free body diagram means that we need to cut our structure like this. In this structure, we are going to cut it from two points, element number one and number two. Take it out, put external forces and internal forces. So external force P is acting at this point, and on the cut section, we put two unknown forces. One in element number one, like this, another one in element number two, like this, and again, all these forces should, may, should face outward from the surface. Now we will use equilibrium equation, some of the forces in x direction equal to zero, and some of the forces in y direction equal to zero. First, let me write down the forces in x direction. Um, the forces in x direction, uh, we have two components. F1 times cosine of this angle, 40, that goes to the left. I assume the left side is negative. And F2 times cosine of 55, that goes to the right, and I assume that is positive, and that should be equal to 0. If I solve it for F2, that gives me F2 is equal to cosine of 40 divided by cosine of 55 times F1. And if I plug the values, that gives me 1.33 F1. In the second equation, I will write down some of the forces in y direction. Um, the y components of F1 is F1 times sine of 40. That goes upward. I assume that is positive. The y component of F2 is F2 times sine of 55. And that is not equal to 0 because there is one external force going downward. So that is equal to P. Now, I can solve these two equations and determine how much is F1 and F2 as a function of P. Remember, here we are looking for P. So I'm going to determine internal force in these two elements as a function of that external force P. All right? So sine of 40 is 0 0.643 times F1. Sine of 55 is 0 0.819 multiplied by F2, and that would be equal to P. I will plug F2 from the top equation to this. So that would be 0 0.819 times 1.33 F1, and that is equal to P, and I can determine how much is F1 from this equation. F1 would be 0 0.576 P. Now I can determine how much is F2. F2 would be 1.34 F1. All right, so we have determined internal forces in these two elements, and I can determine how much is the maximum allowable force in each of these two elements. Let me determine how much is the maximum P based on the yield of stress in element number one. I will write down the design equation. What is that? Design equation says stress should be less than the allowable stress. Stress is force over area, F1 divided by A1, and that should be smaller than allowable stress, which is sigma y divided by factor of safety in that element. All right, let me plug the values. F1 is 0.576p. How much is the area of element number one? It's provided. It's 0.225 squared inch. And the allowable stress. The allowable stress in element number one is calculated from the yield of stress in that element. The yield of stress is 65 KSI. And the factor of safety is 2.5. And here we have one equation which, from which we can determine how much is P. So if I solve that for P, P would be equal to 10.16. What does it mean? It means that if we want to make sure that the stress in element number one is not exceeding that value, the external force should be smaller than 10.16 kips. Does that make sense? All right, we will do the same procedure for, for the other elements. In element number two, we will use the same design equation, but with different numbers. So stress again is force over area. I'm using force and area of that element. And that should be a smaller than the allowable stress, which is sigma y divided by factor of safety. Um, force in that element is 0.769p. Area of that element is 0.375 squared inch. And that should be a smaller than the allowable stress. 
The allowable stress here is equal to 36 KSI divided by factor of safety, which is 2.5. And I can determine another P here. Here, the force should be smaller than 7.02 kips. All right. Here I have two criteria, two limits for the force. Which one is uh, critical? Which one controls the maximum force here? Smaller one. So the maximum allowable force is actually the minimum of the, these two values. Because that is critical here. That which, when I'm increasing the force gradually, that is where I'm reaching first. Maximum force is 7.02 kips.